Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and I've been using iOS 11 since it came out and I'll do a follow up video later, but this is 10 features that I've found or others have found and told me about. So the first one is you can record the screen without an app natively within iOS. Now it's in the control center here and you'll see there is, well, I, I guess I removed it, but there's actually a way to record videos. So you go into your settings and then you go to control center. And in here, you can actually customize what's in here. So you have screen recording. So you hit plus, maybe I want it at the top. I can just slide it up and then you'll see that we have screen record right here. Now this bottom row is actually customizable. So if I push and hold, you can see we can just start recording or stop. So we'll hit start. Now it's already recording. It's recording from the microphone and it will just keep going until I hit stop and then it's saved. So you can get it in photos and here's the screen recording. So it works just like you'd think it would. One of the things you may or may not have seen is you have markup within a screenshot. So if I hit the power and the home button, it puts a little snapshot in the bottom left and then we can mark this up with pen or pencil. We can erase it, use the lasso tool and we can even add to it. We can add text, a signature, we have a magnifier. So maybe we want to magnify apps right here. We can make this bigger or smaller, make inside of this bigger or smaller, and it's all built in. When you're done with it, you can share it, or you can just hit done and then save to photos or delete the screenshot. It's a pretty handy little feature and you'll see it's a little stuttery and a little slow right now, but they'll fix that by the time it's released. But it's a nice feature that's built in and simple to use. It does that every time you take a screenshot. The next thing is I didn't cover in my iOS 11 video is there's actually a new calculator app and it's nothing that exciting, but it looks different. So it's rounded buttons and they've been known to change things from time to time. Again, you get the the more advanced keyboard when you go into landscape here, but otherwise it's just a new keyboard and looks pretty nice. The next thing that's been added is the ability to share Wi-Fi. Apple is no longer just limiting the NFC capabilities in the back of the iPhone to just Apple Pay. It does a couple other functions. So the first one is sharing Wi-Fi. So maybe a friend comes over and you want to share the Wi-Fi with them. All they need to do is bring their phone close to yours and it will allow you to share the Wi-Fi. Apple has added the ability to quickly set up a new device. So maybe you have a new iPhone that you're going to purchase and your old device is there and you want to quickly add your Apple ID and your your Wi-Fi password to it. This works similarly to the way Wi-Fi does, but all you need to do is bring your device close to it. So this is a new iPhone 6s that we're setting up here. It's been wiped and it's starting over. We select our region and we bring it close to our device. Now I did this earlier to test it out. Let me unlock it and you'll see immediately it pops up and says, set up your new iPhone. So we'll hit continue. It takes a moment and gives you the similar to Apple Watch setup. So we'll bring this here. We'll bring this within range. And it says your new iPhone is transferring information from this iPhone. Keep this iPhone close to your new iPhone to make sure that the transfer can be completed. And that's all there is to it. It takes a moment. It sets the main things up that you want set up. It takes a few moments to activate your phone and you're good to go. It's much easier and then you can select your backup, such as your iCloud backup, things like that. Makes it very simple to do. One thing that's been shown a lot is an interface that's different when you play video. So if you're in a video and you're playing that video, it looks a little bit different. Let me show you what I mean. Here's my video of the eGPU for the MacBook that Apple is releasing for developers. And you'll see it looks similar here, but if I hit the volume button, Volume stays in the upper right now. It doesn't cover your screen. You can still see your content. If I tap on the screen, it looks a little bit different on the bottom and the minimize or maximize button is right there and then right here. So it's all a little bit different for the video interface. We want to stop it. We hit the X and it's done. So it's a nice little upgrade and I think it gets out of the way when you're trying to watch a video. Within email, there's a few subtle changes, but one has to do with threads. Let me open email. And in one of my threads, you'll see here's a bunch of different conversations going back and forth between myself and someone else. And if I want to see one of those, I can simply tap on them, open it up and take a look. One thing is less of a feature, but more of a note 
is Facebook and Twitter have been removed from default application sign-ins from settings, something Apple just decided to take out. They don't want to basically favor anyone anymore, I guess, and so they left that out. Wouldn't really call it a feature, but it's a deletion from before. Privacy has been updated so that it is more power efficient, at least that's how I see it, and more customizable. So if you go into your settings and then you go to privacy, within privacy, you actually have more options. So if you go to location services, one thing that I find uses a lot of battery has to do with GPS. And some apps didn't allow you to change this. So what it might do is either Google Maps, for example, may only allow you to use location always or never. Almost, I think everyone now has while using the app as an option. And that's what I use most of the time. If I want it to use my location information, such as maps, I never ever want to use it when I'm not in that app because it will use more data. So for all of these different things, I just change them to while using and the problem of using my battery without me knowing it goes away. The final new feature is within FaceTime. FaceTime is something I actually use quite a bit and there's a new setting within it. So let's go into settings for FaceTime. Within FaceTime, if you go all the way to the bottom, you now have an option for FaceTime live photos. This allows you to take a picture while you're in FaceTime of a live photo. And it's just a button at the bottom of FaceTime that's built in. We're in a FaceTime call and you can see there's a button to actually take a picture now. It doesn't seem to work at this time, but it's something that's there and probably will be working in future releases. That's it for iOS 11 and about 10 or a few more features that are new that I didn't mention in my previous video. Now, if you found any that you find interesting, let us know in the comments below. I'll also leave a link to the wallpaper in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.